No, look, I promise. It'll have a little theme tune. It'll be totally classy. It won't be cheesy in any way whatsoever. It'll be fine. Uh, So good afternoon, handy viewers and handy listeners now, such as you are, and welcome to this into a new preview series, uh, or I'm loosely terming Navigating Navigators, Uh, and I am joined by, um, well, esteemed colleague and the man responsible for me getting into Guild Ball, Mr. Connor Rooney. Hello! It's fair to say, Connor, you are reasonably well associated with fish. Yeah, I'd say I've been playing Shark since season one. I've got about a hundred games with him, and a bit, probably about forty with Corsair now. So you know, you're not entirely hateful. It's uh, exactly. It's, it's mainly on the shark side. So, so, on a scale of one to ridiculous, uh, navigators much hype. Um, I'd say out of ten, it's probably at about a nine. Okay. Uh, That's the only thing thinking. keeping it from a ten is that. I just, you know, I re- I've just worried that the bird is a seagull and not an albatross. It's clearly a seagull. I mean, right. it's so big. <laughs> There's no seagulls that big. I'm, I'm team albatross on this. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. You know, division straight away. So, um, as many of you may have noticed, I have taken to putting out, uh, my audio aspects of my video content now out on, uh, Podbeard or Beard Pod. I, I can't remember what I called it. Um, so this will be available both to you and onto the YouTubes immediately as this very first of the Navigators is being released. And Con- I've brought Connor in as a man who knows considerably more about fish and, to be fair, Gilball than I uh, to talk about Horizon. So before we sort of dive into the card itself, although I'm sure many of you have read it already, so I don't want to just turn this into a reading session. Um, and certainly Horizon is a model that we had a lot of sneak peeks, both at Vengeance and, I want to say... Norwegian nationals? I can't remember. What was the one that Steve went across to? Oh, uh, God. Was yeah. it Sweden? Sweden or somewhere. I feel like Ste- it was Sweden. It's, it's, yeah, Steve went to Scando Town and, like, spoiled some stuff. I think that's fair to say. So, what I wanted to have a quick look at, doubtless you already have the card in front of you, or if you're watching this on the YouTubes, then you're seeing the card, is there are a number of differences just in the formatting so before i unleash uh, the moose botherer himself to discuss and enthuse about horizon i just want to touch on a couple of the things that really stand out to me in terms of the the actual card as if this is the format of season four this is the sort of thing that i find quite interesting so the playbook to me looks bigger not in terms of just like the number of results, but just the circles look more readable, like they're sort of 20, 30 percent larger. Um, equally, we've got this guild ball trophy for triggering character plays. I'm hoping that this isn't a third option, that this is going to replace either the single guild ball or preferably the double guild ball symbol. I think um, they confirmed that the double guild ball symbol was changing. See, that makes a lot of sense to me because I've seen certainly a lot on sort of new player forums or in my role as pundit. One of the questions I get asked or I see it on gubs from time to time is if I get a double guild ball, does that mean I can buy a single guild ball result twice? Um, yeah. And whilst you or I know that not to be the case, it's a reasonable thing for a new player to assume. Um, and as much as I'd love. You know, unmasking twice from Ghast or something, <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. It's not going to happen. So I like the um, the Guild Ball Trophy character play trigger. Um, switching to the back of the card, we have Horizons Guild Rule, the Navigators Guild Rule, which I'm sure we'll come to in a moment when we talk about the card itself. As you know, it's on the card. It's not like on the the little card that comes in the pack that goes with it in the same way that we have, say, blacksmiths or farmers. It's actually on the card, which, given this guy goes into fish, I think is quite interesting. I dare say you've got Mm -hmm. to say about that in a moment. And then the two traits, and again, I don't really want to get into what those traits are just yet, but um, one has a bullet point and one doesn't. And just looking at it, the one with the bullet point seems more active. Mm Mm-hmm. So it looks to me like if I you know, and this is our first example, and I'm purely overreacting after one card, which you know why not? You know, it's a it's a podcast. That's what we're here to do. Um, that the one with the bullet points seems to be an active thing going 
uh, yeah, you know, it's the thing that you trigger. So that would be, I'm trying to think of an example of an existing card in the current season. I guess Harmonies, once per turn, she can take her sister's kick stats and tack. That would be an equivalent there. But the passive one without the bullet point would be the linked activation. I don't know. Or maybe they'd be the other way around. <laughs> Um, and then lastly, right at the bottom, it seems a really small thing, but it's quite a nice thing to see, is that they've actually got licensing information on the cards. Oh, yeah. Like, um, you know, these, this, this is their intellectual property. This is how they make their livelihood. So it makes sense for the copyright information to be on the graphic itself. Uh, anything else I've missed? Oh, yeah, Zone is now gone from character plays. I still never really got with. What- and that that's was. exactly why I'm glad it's gone. <laughs> like, it I just kind of ignored that. Yeah, and I think a lot of people did. Like, if it was a three-inch AOE ongoing effect and you knew it was because it was poison or fire or whatever, um, if it was a two-inch pulse from, you know, if it was a an intensifier or something like that, you knew it was. The zone thing didn't really help. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all right, I can't hold him back any longer. Horizon, Mr. Rooney, where would you like to start? Oh, man, where to start with this guy? Um, Weirdly, I kind of want to start on the back of the card. Okay. Because we we got to find out some of the front of his card at... Was it... No, no, it was Vengeance, I think. We found out some of the... We found out Don't Get Cocky at Vengeance. Oh, that's what it was, yeah. And Precise Calculations. So just very quickly... So we've seen most of the back of his card... Uh, apart and apart from the the enormous one at the bottom. Apart from one, I kind of figured uh, when they said the that uh, there'd be a lot of inactivation and out of activation dodges. Well, here's our first inactivation dodge, and it hot take might be the best character trait in the game. Probably I mean, I know, not, I, I, but I it feels you, that way. You've always been a huge fan of where they go. Like when I was first getting into the game, um, and for for my sins, we're starting out with with hunters and wanted to put all on the pitch. You know, one of the first things you said to me was, "You will soon realise just how powerful where they go is." Yeah, so, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Alpha is a design choice by Steamforged to test how bad a model with where they go could be <laughs> before it can't be used. All right. But so what's, um, better, what's better than a four inch dodge? Well, it turns out it's a five inch dodge for free. For free. For and, free! But not triggerable from the playbook in the same no. way that um, where they go is. Um, is that a big impact for you? To be honest, um, I don't, I've, I've really only played with grayscales as a where they go model. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess Flint is actually. And both of them, I almost never take it on the book because you usually want the extra distance. Okay. As well as. So if you take it on the book, you then can't buy it so a lot of the time you'll just take the dodge on the book and then buy it if you need so, they, so it's less because it's triggered from the playbook you find it to have less control yeah i find um i usually just pay for it if i need the distance okay and if i don't need the distance i usually don't care if i hit it sometimes you'll get in a situation where you desperately need to charge and hit the where they go on the playbook but usually i find it pretty uncommon i usually find you're either sp- Sprinting and where they go, or uh, charging and then where they go after. Okay. But um, so I don't think I'd miss it that much in that way. Uh, but it does bring me to. I it, it's so hard not to compare this guy to Grayscales. Okay. A uh, a slow moving winger. In theory, uh, who has an incredibly long dodge and a six inch range kick. Okay. As a winger on a scoring-based team, this guy's definitely going to fight for the grayscale slot and fish, and he's going to play that role in that's, navigators. That's certainly something we didn't know. Whilst from uh, from from Vengeance, we knew that uh, Siren and Angels was going to be going not Angel Angel was going to be going to navigators. This is the first in, in sign that we've seen of who would be going from navigators to fish. So, mm-hmm. a- as a fish player, and it's interesting you mentioned this guy's immediately competing for your grayscale slot, and grayscales is certainly one of those players that, you know, if someone declares fish against me, I'm expecting to see grayscales on the table, particularly if it's shark. Yeah. Um, so, is this is is that what this is, essentially? Is this a, a younger, fitter, less dead um, 
grayscales. Well, I think it's the easiest way to kind of think about him, but there's some major differences. Um, yeah. Like, he's, he's a armor. fast winger who's going to get you goals. <laughs> mm. um, but the main difference, I the more I think about it, is uh, Grayscales is super reliable in in situations where you just give him four influence. He can easily turn that into four momentum. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and this guy you, is not going to You can't do say that. that, no. And I think it's worth, at this point, sort of talking about the playbook. And I don't want this to be a card read session. Cause, yeah, know, but you, it's, a, it's an interesting playbook, for as sure. As someone that's been playing a, a reasonable amount of Masons of late, and I know you have as well, mm-hmm. this if this is indicative of what a Navigator playbook is, it's almost like the anti-Mason playbook, in that all, all the momentum is at the, the top end rather than at the, the yeah. foundation. It's, it's also interestingly... Um, kind of an anti-fisherman book, not in so much the way it looks, but fishermen, especially shark teams, are notorious for basically not caring about anything past the team yeah, follow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it's, and it's... this guy has an unbelievably juicy fourth column. My God. <laughs> what, with both unexpected arrival and a tackle and double dodge? Yeah. There are no... Off the top of my head, and I play a fair bit of fish, I don't think there are any tackle repositions in fish. Really? Yeah. So that's a pretty massive um, difference there. I'm immediately and flipping a, uh, through the cards. <laughs> especially because getting into some slight navigators theory, if the playbooks all look like this, yeah, um, you're they're going to be one of the rare teams that will actually want to charge things. I mean, because I'm just going to very, work. very quickly correct you, and I'm not surprised you didn't pick up on it. But Jack has a uh, momentous tackle, double push. Oh, you're right on column five, I believe. <laughs> and and uh, I don't uh, think I've ever hit it. And he's never in your ten, as far as I can remember. Well, so. <laughs> I mean, he, he's often in the tenth slot, but he doesn't yeah. see the six much. But I'm not surprised that's one that we, you know, that doesn't immediately spring to mind. Yeah, exactly. I think I was thinking more dodging, but yeah, right. yeah, that's a. Uh... But man, the uh, unexpected arrival is probably the most interesting thing on this playbook because, other than that, it's pretty clearly just this guy wants the ball so he can score or move the ball. Yeah, because yeah, um, unexpected just... arrival is interesting because it's a new tool that kind of replicates what Jack's role is in fish. That's a fair comparison. Although um, not as less easy reliably. To get yeah, but. If you can hit it, it does a lot of the same stuff, and he brings it from a more uh, football-y position. Mm. But I, the uh, one of the issues I think I actually have with navigators is I really think the guild rule should be called math is hard because calculating <laughs> the odds with rerolls is really screwing with my brain. Have you seen um, the fantastic Charles O'Nursa, his uh, unpronounceable blog? Oh my uh, god! I I read that article and I still don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, Charles is a PhD mathematician, and I'm glad he is, and I'm glad he exists and can tell me what things are because I would not have been able to work that out. But yeah, they, they, if you haven't seen it, and that and his phenomenal damage calculator uh, are available, I will try and remember to put a link in the doobly doo. I might forget. It's quite hot out. My brain doesn't work. Um, so. With that playbook and with the precise calculations, I'm really hoping that this is the sort of thing that we see from Navigators quite a lot, is that they've got quite a low tack, um, you know, in the fours or fives. Maybe maybe the Big Fella and Windy have a attack a, a, a five or maybe a six, but the vast majority of them I'd like to see with quite a low tack and then all the momentum up the top end of the playbook so that they really need that reroll. Yeah, I'd expect to see tack four and five pretty much across the board yeah. outside of maybe the big guy. Mm. Um, and even then, I wouldn't be surprised with tack five because fish don't often have that much high tack, and I think they're pretty comparable in that way. Um, the stats that kind of surprised me the most on this guy, I mean, four six move is you know short, but when you include the dodge, he basically moves nine inches for free. Yeah, which, that's that's huge. Um, I think, and the, the vast only... majority of it not triggering parting blows as well. Are there any models in the game that move that much? For free, greed maybe being like jogged forward by avarice. Yeah, inches, I guess. And then uh, dropped off. I was like, I can think running, of but... I can think of eight inch moves like uh, 
you know, snake skin or Friday with shadow like and six inch walk. But man, That's... a nine inch for zero influence is uh, pretty tasty. Yeah, it's and, and like I said, it's it's not going to trigger a parting blows. It's not. You know, he's going to be able to essentially go where he wants. Um, because this is certainly because most of the time, not parting blows aren't always phenomenal unless it lets you know you're going against a ball carrier. Um, but damage against this guy really, really counts. Like it, yeah, I mean, eight health, <laughs> eight health, and he comes back on eight health, which I think is you know something at least. That's but so he's, cool. He has he's so cool. <laughs> he, I mean, there is a, there is a degree of of Han Solo about him. I think it's fair to say. Um, but that three one defense, eight health. Yes, all right. <laughs> he only he only off he only gives up um, one VP when he dies, and he can come back on kind of where you want him to. I mean, there's a huge variety of places where he can come back onto the pitch and threaten either as a snapshot turret or you know just a goal threat at any point. Um, particularly if he's you know coming on from the side of pitch in my deployment zone four inches, then gets a, for another four inches, then gets a five inch dodge, and if there's any of those plot cards are in play, which give him extra movement or extra movement for coming back on, he can go where he wants. Like yeah. just quite happily, it's don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he isn't worth killing. If they if they put this card out and he'd been like death five armor zero and he's one VP, I'd be like fine, mate. You can do whatever you want. Like yeah, I'm gonna go so and kill your I'm gonna go kill your mascot instead. <laughs> I'm just going to go and kill the bird or kill tentacles or salt or whoever it is because I'll get the same amount of VP and it'll be much, much easier. But... Yeah. Well, actually, it... what's funny is people like people are saying, like, oh, you know, he comes back and he's one health. He's significantly easier to kill than most mascots. 100%. Like, tentacles is a 4-1 with 9 health. Yeah. And salt is, I think, a 5-0 with 6 or 7 health. Yeah, uh, well, you look at the likes of like Dirge. You know, you're going to be giving up something for doing it. Frelsey's quite beefy. Pride, <laughs> um, yeah. Strongbox, those sorts of guys. You know, the mascots that we see a lot of. Mother, those. You know, that sort of thing. Let alone the likes of Truffles on his eleven. Is he eleven health and tough height? Oh, that's... he's just a pain. But I still prefer Princess. But that's a yeah. Side oh no, absolutely. But I don't play butchers. Um... The, but the other, with, with, yeah, the with, with three like one the, was really surprising to me. Based I'm, on I'm really pleased about that. I'm really pleased that he isn't a five A model because if that had been no, the case, I, I was thinking four O like grayscales type. Yeah. Um. So three one surprised me a bit, and it definitely this guy's gonna hate getting blind. Um. Oh God, Because yeah. any debuffs on kick or tack are oh, just yeah, so yeah. much worse on this team. I hadn't even thought of that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. of the low, because of the low attack, because of the low kick. And let, and literally let's be honest, cannot hit on her. And let, let's be honest, um like a movement of two, five inch dodge or not, that's pretty pretty bad. Yeah, uh, and um, you know, four inch kick is uh not great either. And if you're uh, trying to play football and your opponent's stuck it on anvil in cover. <laughs> yeah. Well actually I think I, I've mostly been thinking about horizon in a fisherman context just because we don't know we don't enough know. about yeah, the navigators and, to say much, and you're a fish um, bro, other than so. just to try to guess at this point. When we see a, another card or two, it'll be easier to kind of yeah. figure it out. But the one thing I'm kind of thinking, because I do think uh, he fills in the same slot as Grayscales or the Sakanas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, I do why, not want to run this it? guy into heavy armor teams. No. Nah. Why? Why not Sakana? Why are you comparing him to Sakanas? I don't. I don't see that. Well, I I basically run the Sakanas as wingers. Okay. Um, so I usually, until recently, I pretty much always ran Shark with uh, Sakana on one wing and Grayscales on the other. Okay. And I'm quite enjoying that. This is kind of Vet Sakana shook that up a bit, and Horizon eventually is going to shake that up again. Um, and I think he's way more comparable to Grayscales, but he still kind of fits that role. I always used Sakana more as a winger than a striker in my teams. Okay. Uh, I should say my shark teams. He functions yeah, more yeah. as a striker in Corsair. Ma yeah, makes sense. So, given the comparison there to both Sakanas and Grayscales, and just fish as a whole, mm -hmm. how is the one-inch melee going to impact? Well, yeah. So that's an interesting thing. I've been thinking about this guy, and I just... Sometimes I think like he massively uh, just outperforms Grayscales because he's faster for cheaper. He can basically have a lot of the time. I'll find I'll just put two on Grayscales on a wing, so he can thread a goal from you know 
like wow. uh, 15 inches away or whatever it is. This guy does the exact same. He basically has the exact same threat ranges as grayscales for one influence less. Okay. Um, so he's much better in that way. But, yeah, as you said, like, uh, one inch reach is, I mean, he's a, he's, God, he's, uh, he's continuing the trend for sure. Uh, the falconers started and even the rats of the minor guilds just being paper thin, mm. uh, punching bags, which is great. Cause I actually like playing the, Glass yeah, you're, you're a high elf guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except I refuse to play elves in anything because elves suck. But the in games answer. where there aren't elves, I like that archetype. <laughs> um, which is why I never got on with Blood Bowl, because I just refu- I kept trying to play humans like elves. Didn't no, work. I know, so um, sucks. But what's interesting is he is so football-y, and he feels so much like Grayscales, but then has basically all the weaknesses you never have to deal with in Sharkfish. His yeah. counterattack's not very good. His momentum generation's not very good, and he doesn't have reach. So yeah. I'm struggling to see, like, Oh, it's going to be really interesting because for a long time, my shark team basically hasn't changed based yeah. on matchups. And I think Horizon and uh, Grayscales are a very interesting pair because I think with the increase in two inch reach, Grayscales has gotten a little more easy to kill. Yes. And I think th- those two are going to flop around a lot in my six, depending on what the matchups are like. So against a team like Masons, I really like uh, Grayscales because both of their captains are one-inch reach and they don't have any ranged plays. Sure. But against someone like Engineers, who are all one-inch reach, and sit at the back bombing you, he's amazing. Yep. Because he Um, just comes right on there. I want to think, like, the one guy that immediately stands out to me, admittedly, I am not a fish player, um nor am I particularly enamoured with Navigators. It's part of the reason I've asked Con- Connors to come in and talk about them. But looking at sort of recent releases, I really want to see Vet Sakana with Horizon, purely because he makes him a six-inch jog with whatever the character play is that mm-hmm. you know, makes makes people faster. Also, like a free bonus time when you have re-rolls. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about the bonus time on this guy. That sounds like fun. I mean, for you, not for me. <laughs> yeah, it, it's but, interesting because I normally only think about the bonus time for character plays because it has so much more value. Yeah, sure. Um, but on attack four model with rerolls, it actually has a lot of a value just for an attack. Or you know, taking a a, a three dice kick, uh, going from a yeah. two a two six to a three six kick and getting rerolls on those. That is a very very reliable snapshot target. So even if you're just putting, you know, even if you've got if you've got Horizon in, in a good place, you know, six inches away from goal or eight inches away from goal with Corsair kicking around, presuming, and this is a huge assumption on our part, that one legged stance stays the same, all of a sudden is it is it plus two plus two kick that one legged uh, stance plus gives? one plus two. It's like super plus one plus two. So he's gonna be a four eight kick with re rolls. Lol Yeah, he's a... Uh... That's an interesting point, actually. I've thought a lot about him and Shark, because you tend to fit two of these players in mm. uh, with Shark, which I guess you will with Corsair, too, because, uh, I mean, I've played Sakana and Grayscales in those slots with him before, too. But, yeah, he's... um, It's, it, it's going to be very interesting, because I think a lot of... He's going to be super fun, and I'm super excited to play him. Mm. Uh, but what's going to be really interesting from a competitive standpoint, because it's... You know, that Shark 6 is, That's you know, tight. I've run it for, yeah. Ble- with uh, original Siren and Hag. Um, I've run that 6 a lot in the last year uh, since basically the errata Shark had where Avers and Greed did, was no longer a striker. Because mm-hmm. um, that was great. But it's <laughs> very man. interesting because I, I think he's a very hard character to theorize because he's so weird. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's got 8 health. He only gives up one point, and he comes off the opponent's board edge. That could be amazing, or you could just be constantly having him die and do nothing. Uh, yes. And I think that's probably going to be a matchup-dependent thing. I think I don't think he's going to go anywhere near blacksmiths. Uh, no, nope. anyone pure... with a, a blacksmiths, no, or masons. He just can't deal with the armor. Uh, also, like you can have a, a phenomenal game of how many, how few hits can Sledge kill this man in. And the answer is one. Funny. It's just yeah. one, just straight up. I'm, um, yeah. It's plus five net hits. 
wrapped to the one, you're dead. Yeah, I mean, um, Cinder charges him and he dies. Bet Cinder, like, yeah. I, I'm, um, yeah. If he's on I'm fire, thinking... cast removes him, iron will yeah, I'm not, him. I'm not happily. a math guy, but that feels like more than a 50% chance he goes. <laughs> <laughs> She's got, what, five on five? Yeah. Throwing 10 dice at it against a 3 1. Mm-hmm. He probably hits that. <laughs> it's better if, yeah, and if, we'll not and be it, putting him in against blacksmiths. And if anything and then, bad against, has happened to him, um, right. against smoke is a perfect example where you just want to get the pressure on early, um, and you just don't care if he dies. No, like if he dies turn one, fine. He'll still put pressure on turn two. Mm. You just got to keep him away from vet catalyst. Yep, uh, I think it's an interesting one against versus obulus because because yep. like sweet, like you can reroll passes to me. Thanks. Yeah. Um, the upside, though, is slow characters that depend on a dodge are really annoying to tr- for teams that try to lure things in. It's true. Yes. Yeah, that's very true. Like, it's quite easy. Just put him in rough ground and just plan on uh, dodging out of it immediately. And when they move you, you're going to move two inches. Yeah. Um, I don't think you put him in against Hunters or Falconers. Because they'll just fill him full of arrows all day long. Yeah, that's one of the ones I'm actually not sure about. Um, but that's mostly just because I'm not really sure how fish deal with that generally uh, mm-hmm. when falconers are out. <laughs> cool. Um, any final thoughts then on Horizon before we uh, move this on? Uh, yeah, I guess there's only one thing we didn't really touch on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually was something else I was surprised by alongside the defense of three, which is he's got a three influence cap. Okay. So... That's a problem in a lot of scenarios. It means he can't really deal with counterattacks any more than he normally could. Like, he's being one inch reach with two three means if he wants to get the ball off someone and you don't have momentum, you have to charge and hit that tackle double dodge. Okay. Because if they, unless they're, you know, a terrible tackle, but usually if they're holding the ball, it's because they're good at tackling. Uh, basically taking a non-momentous tackle, then tackling it back, and then you having to take a non-momentous tackle, and then you don't have any more influence to get momentum before you take the shot. Um, oh, would you? And I, I think about this because it's happened to me with two, three models before, uh, such as Siren, where you counterattacks just mean like, oh, I guess I'm not getting this ball. Not that Siren ever does with tackle on three, but I mean, it is given that Siren is going to be an availability in Navigators. Is that a huge? Oh, that's great. Yeah, because it, 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 does that go some way to mitigating it? Um, like I don't think he's bad at getting the ball. I just think this is a team that if they reflect Horizon and have like tack four with no momentum to column three, is really going to struggle with. Um, well, with momentum. Like, in a lot of situations with fishermen, you could basically just spend four influence on one of your models getting four momentum. And then, whenever you get the ball later in the turn, you have the momentum to score. Whereas these, whereas this guy, he wants to charge and hit that tackle double dodge, and if he doesn't hit it, he's probably not getting the ball and scoring no. off the model. No. Um, and I really need to get someone to do the math on what the likelihood of him hitting that on the charge is. <laughs> okay, so we'll speak to Charles O'Nursa, find out the probability of, of, of hitting that. And in the meantime, as soon as there is another Navigator model released, I will keel haul. <laughs> see what I did there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Connor back into his recording booth, and we will get another one of these videos slash podcasts. Out Cannot to wait. Uh, Connor, thank you very much for joining you. Joining yep, you. Thanks for having joining, me. <laughs> joining me, particularly when it's a million degrees out. And until it next is time, a million degrees. Handy listeners such as you are, as ever, I need a better outro. <laughs> <laughs>